Hello, my name is Katie Rushworth and today I've come to have a nosy around some local allotments. Now, I love an allotment. They are a brilliant part of British culture and they are so interesting. There's tons growing in this person's allotment here. It's really not very big at all. But we've got comfrey, which is this plant here. And this is a brilliant accelerator of compost. So it can be chopped up, added to your compost heap, and it will kind of really aid that decomposition and speed things up. It also makes a brilliant liquid feed. In this next bed, we've obviously had a bumper crop of courgettes. These are all courgette plants, and they've still got lots to come on them. Some over there have even turned to big marrows. The next bed is resting. So once all the rest of the crops are out and being, these beds are being dug over, this one will be ready to start sowing. So preparation is key with lots of allotment work. This one has carrots and leeks growing together. You can smell the carrot um, from here. And why this has been done is something called companion planting. So there is a pest called carrot fly, which decimates carrot crops. One way to trick the pests into not knowing it's there is to plant smelly vegetables next to it, like the leeks. So hopefully these leeks will protect the carrots from the dreaded carrot fly. Seems to be working so far. We've got French beans here, and then we've got a lettuce bed with one lone lettuce left, so that's waiting to be harvested. Strawberries in this one, and then some beautiful dahlias. Dahlias are a constant on many allotments because at this time of year, even, we're in the second week in October and there's tons of colour, beautiful blooms to pick and they just kind of cheer up the whole plot really. And this is an impressive crop of runner beans. They are so easy to grow and the lovely thing about them is they have gorgeous flowers which are scarlet or orange and the bees and pollinators love them. Now this isn't the prettiest part of the plot granted but it is a vital and important part of an allotment. All allotments at this time of year usually get a big delivery of horse manure and this will be used as mulch in the autumn and the springtime dug in and to kind of recharge the soil, fill it full of nutrients for next year. I'm going to show you some winter vegetables that you can sow at this time of year. Come with me. It's really important when sowing any seeds that you create what's called a fine tilth and that's a really fine crumbly texture. The reason you do that is because the really fine roots that come out of the seed want an easy, as easy a life as possible. So things like stones and really compacted bits of soil are just going to get in the way of those fine roots so we want to remove them. Next. I want to dig a couple of trenches. This first set of rows is going to be broad beans. These want to be around five centimetres deep trenches. Now you can sow broad beans in springtime as well but sowing them in autumn will give you about a month to possibly six weeks head start next year so you'll get a nice early crop and then you could sow again in spring so your crop will continue much later into the year okay so that's one the soil is still incredibly warm at this time of year so it's perfectly safe for lots of vegetables to be sown. But you do want the ones that are either really tough and will cope with the cold, or things that will crop very quickly, so they will be up and ready to pick before the frost hits. Okay. So they're my trenches. Now for my beans. They have a lovely clatter to them broad beans and I'm going to space them about six inches apart.
On the next row, I'm going to try and space them alternately. So where there's a space here, there will be a plant there. And then that means they've got maximum room. Okay. Now I'm gonna gently cover those up with the soil that I removed. Now this soil has been dug over and all the pernicious weeds like dock and dandelion have been removed. And that's a really important thing to do because any weed that is left, there's a bit of couch grass there, is gonna compete for, so for nutrients in the ground with your seeds and you really don't want that to happen. So it's a laborious job getting rid of all the weeds but if you want your vegetables to thrive, it's really an essential part of growing vegetables. And then I'm gonna firm that down gently with my foot. It's also essential to label things because it's quite tricky when the new shoots start coming up to remember what you actually planted and identify them so labeling and watering are really the last jobs on the list if you're really lucky and have a greenhouse you can grow lots of winter salad crops inside things like pak choy as well also do really well which is an oriental vegetable and things like garlic actually need a cold spell of weather in order to germinate so planting them actually in November time is excellent because they get all that cold winter and that what that does is it, they, it breaks the dormancy of the plant and encourages it to grow sounds crazy but it's true um, next we're going to plant some spring onions because these come up very very quickly Now to do this I only need to use a trowel and it's a very shallow drill. In the soil and I've planted them a, about a foot away from the beans. These will be up much quicker than the beans so the beans will not hinder the spring onions or get in the way. Now onion seeds are notoriously tiny. You'll see in a second. So there must be at least oh, 100 if not more seeds there. Now it is tricky to see, but if they do grow too closely, you can thin them out and that's absolutely fine. These are a quick cropping spring onion so as soon as they've got their top growth on you can use them like chives when you thin them out by thinning out I mean to pick the spring onions in order to give other seedlings space so you can kind of pick the new growth and use it just as you would chives and then the ones that are left will have more room to bulk out grow and get bigger and you can pick them as they mature and turn into larger plants. And you don't have to have an allotment to grow spring onions. They are so easy. You can grow them in any container by the back door and pick them as and when you wish to want to use them. They're really, really easy vegetable. Let's cover those back up. Give them a firm down with the back of my trowel. And another water. Next I've got some cut and grow again lettuce. Now in the summer months 
the idea behind this is that you sew it. So I'm going to give another foot between the spring onions and these leaves. But the idea behind cut and come again lettuce is as soon as the leaves start looking large enough to pick, you can trim them from the base of the plant and the leaves will grow again. So you can keep picking and picking. However, it is autumn time now, so we might not be able to cut them and expect them to come again. We might just get the one flush out of these, but it's still really lovely to have fresh salad leaves this late in the year. There are lots of varieties in this one leaf mix, which is good. So it's not just one type of salad leaf, it's a mix. And again, they have very tiny seeds. But look at the variety within one pack. I love seeds for that reason. You've got blue and black and yellow and oval and round. Gorgeous things. Now these, I'm quite happy to sew them quite thickly because we just want them to come up quickly and we'll pick them as we need them over the next, hopefully, two to three weeks. With the soil still being warm, as I mentioned, they should be up nice and swiftly. These are a nice thing to grow if you've got grandchildren or children because, especially small children, are not particularly very patient in the garden. So anything that you can get that will grow quickly, that they can eat, will always go down well. I'm gonna use a whole packet along this row, which I wouldn't have necessarily done earlier in the year. But as I've mentioned, we want them to come up quickly and thickly before that frost sets in. I'll just cover them up with my hand. Pop my packet there so I know where it is, and I'll give them a water. And last but not least, I've got some spinach. This is a perennial spinach. So when you've harvested it, that's not the end of the plant. It will come back the following year. It's, it's a bit thicker and coarser than normal spinach. Might require a little bit more cooking, but the wonderful thing about it is it comes back every year. Let's get my spade for that. It's really important when you're growing vegetables to plan what is going where in your beds. At this time of year, there's only a, so a certain amount of stuff that you can actually grow. So in terms of where you place things and how much growth space they need, it's a minimal worry. But come springtime, planning out your beds and how much space everything needs is really important. Things like pumpkins, and courgettes need tons of space. So you would hate to put your peas in that were doing well and then they'd be taken over by a giant pumpkin. As fairy tale as that sounds, it does happen. Again, this can be thinned out. So if there's too much of it and it's growing too thickly, harvest what you want and that will give the plants that are left more room and you can do that with any vegetable although things like carrots when they're thinned out you should really do that later on in the day when the carrot fly out buzzing around so much because disturbing any carrots releases the scent of the carrot to the carrot fly and they can really damage a crop. There we go. And then I'm gonna cover that back up. There we go. So 
That's two rows of perpetual spinach, some salad leaves, some spring onions, and some broad beans. But I should be able to harvest, start harvesting within three weeks, and they should see me through till springtime, and then I can really get started with everything else. And my last job is some plant labels. So, I've got broad beans. Broad beans. Spring onions. Now, unless we have an unseasonably dry winter, which in this country I very much doubt, these will need very little in terms of looking after. Watering a couple of times a week, some spring onions and the leaves that we want to pick nice and early. As far as the spinach and the broad beans go, as long as it's rained and the soil is a little damp, they'll be absolutely fine over the winter. So there we have it, 20 minutes of work for hopefully weeks and weeks of produce. For more how-to videos, visit silverlinetools.com.